Hi there, today I'm going to cover what to watch out for when transitioning from pre to post contract. To do this, we're going to use a good old fashioned bow tie diagram. And this is how we've been talking about it with a number of uh, partners of ours. So look on the left, you've got pre contract and on the right is post contract. On the left, the focus is all around identifying the need and then the outcome that's desired by the business. And then they go through a selection process where they engage a number of suppliers that they think can meet the needs and provide the outcomes. And then they break it down always talking about future value. So focused on the value that could be derived in the future. And it breaks down into what products and services are going to be taken, standard terms and conditions that get negotiated, and then pricing that also gets negotiated. Typically run by procurement, commercial and legal departments, all focused on contractual terms and building this final contract that gets signed. And wrapped around that final contract is typically a handover process and an operating model. And then it leads into the post contract side of things where that sort of largely static document, those legalese get broken down again into obligations, rights, clauses, etc. What needs to be in flight, done when, that's either triggered by a period or by a data condition, the governance and compliance that and the regs that wrap around it so code of conduct etc anti-slavery all those policies how they get measured out and then showing that the contract complies with it over a period of time risk management risk assessments and then performance and reporting on that against the overall contract health throughout its life cycle to ensure that it's being delivered in the right way that part of the bow tie so the right hand side is implementation and delivery focus and then ultimately running with it for the life of the contract it's typically done by the business unit and the delivery teams and sometimes in occasion there's a temporary structure stood up like a project or program team to at least implement it and get it off the ground to start with and that side of the bow tie is focused on the needs being delivered and the outcomes being recognised that were thought about right at the beginning of the left hand side so what can you expect to have as pitfalls throughout this process well initially were you You've got to the left-hand side of the bow tie, the pre-contract team start ramping down. They start getting to the point of where the contract's about to be signed and a lot of that manpower disappears and focuses on the next deal or the next thing they're meant to be working on. Typically, this causes a flow of data that reduces and the format that is constructed in now is typically, like I said, that document that isn't in a format that's designed for post-contract management. So you've got a flat file that needs to be referred to with tons of wording in, etc., that contains all the information that needs to be delivered by both parties or multi-party. That then comes to a position where depending on the operating model and the process and the handover process surrounding the deal, there could be a issue around the length of time that operating model needs to get defined. A poorly defined process, a poorly defined handover will result in a lag there and possibly some problems. Equally, as the other team ramps down, the delivery teams start to be stood up. What this contributes to, again, with a poor operating model, poor handover, in some cases I've seen this be several months in lag. And when you look at the context of it being a year, or a three-year deal, several months to operationalize something on a three-year deal is a significant chunk of value that's now been missing and that loss of momentum because of the handover process being suboptimal and the tooling around that, not being able to digitize that deal and being in the incorrect format for the implementation team to make the most of. You then have this need from a flat file structure, like I said, translating those legalese into a scope that a project manager, a program manager and a run the business side of a lead can make sense of. And all the while, as delivery goes and the implementation is focused on the delivery teams, etc., and the business units, there's a potential need for that feedback loop to change and track the changes of the contract. Not all con contracts are written right first time. It'd be madness to expect that because a lot of the left side of the bow tie is theoretical. So when you come to actually implement that, you have to afford that flexibility and make sure you're tracking those contract changes successfully to determine how they impact the in-flight obligations or the governance requirements or reporting around the deal. It's not exhaustive, but there's several things to watch out for when you're transitioning from pre to post contract. I hope that was useful. Please follow us on LinkedIn. Also, look at subscribing to the YouTube channel to get tons of other videos and great content and toolkits down. Your feedback is always welcome. Thank you.